There has never been a moment in history where buying a console was better than building your own PC. Consoles had terrible FPS and you could always spend the same amount of money or less building a computer that would perform infinitely better. Everything that Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo put out could never compete with the PC master race. And then last month, Sony introduced the PlayStation 5 and for the first time ever, it might actually be better to buy a console. This video is sponsored by Honey. Honey is a browser extension that helps you save money by applying coupon codes to your cart when you're about to check out. The best part is, it's free. Imagine you're on one of your favorite websites about to check out on Newegg, Domino's, or AliExpress. A little box drops down as you're at checkout, helping find you a promo code that applies to what you're trying to buy. All you have to do is click apply coupons and it will automatically search the internet, finding you a promo code. For me, every single time I need to buy keyboard parts off of KBD fans, Honey helps save me money. I add my item to cart and when I go to check out, I apply any of the coupons that Honey can find me. And as you can see, Honey automatically finds me the best promo code and saves me money every single time I check out. Let's be honest, we all buy a lot of things online and if Honey can help save you money every single time you go to check out, you are going to save yourself a lot of money. There's a reason they have over 17 million users and have saved people over $2 billion. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online and by not having Honey installed, you are passing up on a lot of free money. It's free and finds you the best coupon with one click. So go to joinhoney.com slash Christopher Yee and install it today. Thanks again to Honey for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Just so you know what we're up against, here are some of the specs. An eight core processor clocked at 3.5 gigahertz, a GPU capable of 10.28 teraflops of power, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM, and an 800 gigabyte NVMe SSD. In English, this thing is bad ass. Now I know most of you are probably like, why are we complaining about technology getting better? Isn't that supposed to happen as time goes on? Yes, that is supposed to happen. The problem is that somehow all of that only costs $500. For specs that powerful, you would normally find that in an $800 computer. For this video though, we're gonna focus on one spec specifically, 10.28 teraflops of power. That is the amount of power that comes from the PS5's graphics processing unit. In case you don't know, a teraflop is a unit of measurement for computing speed. Every graphics card has an amount of teraflops they can output. The equivalent of that power would come from a GTX 1080. And right now, if you try to find that graphics card, even used, it sells for $350 which is basically almost the entire $500 it costs for the PS5. So hopefully if you didn't already understand the hype behind the PlayStation 5, now you know. It is a lot of performance for not a lot of money. On top of that, Sony has games that are coming out exclusively for the PlayStation 5. So other than the console being priced insanely well, if you wanna play classics like Ratchet and Clank, Marvel Spider-Man, and Demon's Souls, and more, then you need to get a PlayStation. So what do we do? Sell our computers and give up? Honestly, maybe. But before we do that, I'm not going down without a fight. I spent a lot of time trying to find the perfect build. The cheapest yet packed with performance PC that you can build despite how hard it is to find computer parts right now. And I finally think I have something that you guys can build. Just promise me one thing, at the end of it all, let me know what you think. Is this PC worth it? You can leave a comment below or if you wanna have a conversation in real time, you can follow me on Twitch. I go live a few times a week, so if you join my Discord server or have the Twitch app downloaded on your phone, you'll get a notification for when I go live. Okay, without further ado. Ugh. Yes, I'm aware this isn't the prettiest presentation, but at least this computer won't look like a router. Keep in mind, this build is not ideal due to the availability of parts and delivery times, but the core parts of this build are possible to recreate. For the processor, we have the Ryzen 5 1600. Even though this processor has a little bit of age to it now, considering all the newer options that are out, 
it is still able to game very well and is very, very cheap. If you were looking to upgrade even slightly from something that is six cores, 12 threads, you would be paying at least an extra 50 to $60. And at $105, this thing is great. For the motherboard, we are going with the cheapest option available, which is the Gigabyte A320, AKA the bare minimum. This motherboard comes in at $55. And for a motherboard that supports DDR4, I am surprised we can still get it for this cheap. This is such a poor motherboard that it actually only supports RAM that is 266 megahertz. So in order to maximize on the value of this build, we got Patriot Signature RAM, eight gigabytes of 266 megahertz frequency. This RAM only costs $30. Now, some of you may know that lower frequency RAM does actually impact the FPS in games on Ryzen processors. But the reason we are trying to keep everything so cheap is because we are trying to spend most of our budget on the graphics card in hopes that it will carry this computer in its worth. Now, before I show you the graphics card, I want to tell you something that we haven't talked about in a long time. EVGA Midweek Madness. EVGA Midweek Madness is a sale that happens every midnight of Wednesday morning. Every midnight night of Wednesday as soon as Wednesday starts specific tandem time T -t today junior for a long time especially considering the current state of things going on in the world it has been dry to give further detail in case you don't already know it is a sale that is put on once a week by EVGA selling all of their B stock products that get returned to them all of these products are tested and some of them are just returns that were barely used by customers who purchased them originally now like I was saying lately that sale has been absolute garbage there have been no good parts and no good deals that have gone online. However, these last couple weeks, they've actually been posting a lot of graphics card options for significantly cheaper. There were two cards that I bought specifically for this build, and it's up to you to choose which one you would want to go for depending on your budget. Inside here, we have a GTX 1660 Ti as well as an RTX 2060 XC. The 1660 Ti normally sells for about $280, yet this was available for 220. For the RTX 2060, this card normally sells for $350, However, this was available for only 270. The 1660 Ti is capable of putting out 11 teraflops, whereas the RTX 2060 is capable of putting out 12.90. Both of these cards are comparable in terms of their raw GPU strength to the PlayStation 5. Obviously, there is a $50 difference, so whichever card you end up going for is up to you. In this video, though, we're going to be using the RTX 2060 because, well, you know... <laughs> I'm insecure, I wanna see bigger numbers, I'm kinda of compensating. For the SSD, unfortunately we're not able to compete with the 800 gigabyte NVMe SSD, which is insane. So to try and keep things around the $500 mark, we went with a 240 gigabyte SSD from Adata. It's not much, but it's definitely more than enough to try out a few games. Now, for the power supply, this one's a little bit tough. Most 500 watt power supplies online right now are gonna go for at least $60. However, when I was in LA, I picked up a power supply for only $25. Obviously, this is an in-store deal provided by Micro Center, and if you have one near you, then you are able to do this. If you are not and you need one in this price range, then you're gonna have to try to get one trusted from a friend secondhand. Now, lastly is the case. Unfortunately, I wanted to order something offline, and there are quite a few $40 options that you can get sent to you. However, the earliest arrival date of a case in my city is not for another two weeks. So I do have a Corsair 275R lying around, which I shattered the tempered glass from, so it's not going to be used for anything else. So I figured I would use it in this video and just call it a $40 purchase because there are plenty of cases out there, like I said before, that you can buy. At the end of the day, the point of this build is to get performance, so I hope you will excuse the look. So if you add all of that together, then you are looking at $555 for this build. Remember, if you go for the 1660 Ti option, then you get it down to 505. I know that's more than the speculated $500 price for the PS5, Again, we are trying to make the best thing that is possible with what's available right now. However, for the performance that is going to come out of this for $550, we're looking at something pretty nice. So without further ado, we're going to start building this thing and see just how good it is.
Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Uh. Oh no 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 no. Hey. Okay. Oh. Oh, I thought the fucking. Oh. Okay, so now that we've got some games installed, we are going to try and see what this thing is capable of. So if we take a look at the Fire Strike score, we're 80% ahead of all results taken in this year so far with a score of 16,282. Um, you know, that's kind of where I expect it to be. For $550, getting there, can you find any other pre-built that gets to that level? Absolutely not. Can you find a console that gets to that level? Yeah, probably. It's called the PlayStation 4. Five. So, is this computer worth building? Frames wise, I have a feeling that this is going to be pretty identical performance to what you're going to see in the PlayStation 5. I don't think that we beat it performance wise. However, you have to keep in mind, even though there are exclusive titles to the PlayStation 5, there are also exclusive titles to the PC. If you're an eSports gamer and you like being competitive, there are still games that you can only play if you have a computer. And honestly, one other perk of going this route that I didn't even touch on earlier is the fact that we have ray tracing technology in a computer that costs less than $600. I cannot think of another budget build on the internet that successfully has this that is not incredibly bottlenecked. So while this thing might not blow the PlayStation 5 out of the water with frames, it still is incredible and is a great option to build. Especially considering the times and how expensive computers are, finding RTX cards and RTX builds that you can put in for a system this cheap is definitely impressive. So if you are looking to build this and recreate it, I will put links in the description so that you guys can try and get this for yourself. It's a very simple build. This is not complicated to put together at all. If you are lost, I have a tutorial on how to build a PC on this channel. But anyways, I hope you guys found this video creative, entertaining, or informative in any way, shape, or form. And as always, have a great day. I'm